Having gone through examples under momentum and in force, now let's talk about Newton's laws of motion. Sir so Isaac Newton proposed three laws that governs the motion of an object, which is valid till date. The first law, the first law is also known as the law of inertia. And this law states that a body will continue in its present state of rest or uniform speed unless acted upon by an external force. The tendency of a body to remain in its state of rest or uniform speed or motion is called inertia. Let's take a look at the second law. The second law states that the rate of change of momentum of a body is directly proportional to the applied force and takes place in the direction of the force. Mathematically, force equals change in momentum all over time, where change in momentum is equal to mv minus mu all over t. Now, if the body has a constant mass or if the mass of the body is the same, you can actually factor the mass out to have M v minus u all over t. Let's take a look at the third law. The third law is very common. And this law says that to every action, there is equal and opposite reaction. For instance, let's say a car, a moving car A hits a stationary, a stationary car B. The force exerted on car B by A will be the same as the action of B on A. Also, this is also found in the recoil of a gun. Mathematically, FA equals minus FB. The minus sign signifies that the direction of FA is in opposite to that of FB. Let's take a look at examples on Newton's laws of motion. Example one, the body of mass 20 kilogram is set in motion by two forces, three Newton and four Newton acting at right angles to each other. Determine the magnitude of its acceleration. As uh, so usual, let's bring out the parameters from the question. I've given our M, that's example one. M, 20 kg. F1 is 4 Newton. And F2 is 3 Newton. I have to find the acceleration. Please note that these two forces act at right angles to each other. So let's take a look at the diagram to this. This is my right angle triangle. Let this be F1. Let this be F2. We are asked to find the resultant. So we have to resolve this. Now to obtain the resultant, we're going to apply Pythagoras theorem. Pythagoras theorem states that R squared is equal to F1 squared plus F2 squared. So R squared will become 4 squared plus 3 squared. R squared will become 4 squared will give us 16, 3 squared will give us 9. Our R squared now becomes 25. And root both sides. This and this will go. R becomes the root of 25 will give us 5 Newton. Now we've gotten the resultant force to be 5 Newton. The resultant force is that force that has the same effect as F1 and F2 acting together. Now, since we have obtained a resultant force to be 5 Newton, now let us obtain our acceleration.
Recall that F is equal to MA. Now, I want to make A the subject. You divide both sides by M. By M. This and this will go. Our A now become F all over M. The A is equal to our F is 5. And our M is 20. Now, if you divide 5 by 20, 5 divided by 20, we have 0 0.25 meters per second square. So, this is the acceleration of the body. Let's take a look at another example, example 2. A force of 100 newton is used to kick a football of mass 0 0.8 kilogram. Find the velocity with which the ball moves. If it takes 0 0.8 seconds to be kicked. As usual, let's take a look at the solution. Bring out the parameters. The parameters in example 2 include, we're given F, F 100 Newton, we're given M to be 0 0.8 kilogram. We are asked to find velocity and the time 0 0.8 seconds. Now, this is very similar to what we've done before, but we're going to apply change of subject formula. Now, recall that our F is equal to mass times acceleration. Okay? So, we can obtain acceleration from here. Dividing both sides by M. Our A is equal to F all over M. Our F is 100 all over 0 0.8, which is the mass. Our A will now become 100, 100, divided by 0 0.8. That give us 125 meters per second squared. Now we've obtained the acceleration. Also, we call that from the equation of motion, in our earlier example, A is equal to V minus U all over T. Since the car starts from rest, since the ball starts from rest, our U is equal to zero. Therefore, A is equal to V all over T. Our A was calculated to be 125 equal to V all over time 0 0.8. Now, to obtain V, you cross multiply. When you cross multiply, our V becomes 125 multiplied by 0 0.8. Our V becomes 100 meters per second. So, this is the velocity with which the, guy, the, the ball was kicked. So, we also made use of steel equations of motion. So, these equations of motions are very important in solving questions that has to do with motion of a body.